Yeah, on the toka. It's Eddie Day, right here. Yeah, this is Sachiba one more time. So I was calling, I was talking. Now, when I came to Finland, I had so many things in mind, actually. You know, so many expectations. And I was like, how is it going to be? And what am I going to see? You know, ever since I was young, I always had this dream of traveling outside, going to a place where, you know, I can get to meet different people, get to experience different culture, you know, and um, I always believed that I was a citizen of the world, you know, so um, being from Nigeria, I felt that I was kind of restricted, you know, because of our kind of passport. Before you go to any other country, you need to get a visa, and I didn't want that to be part of me. I wanted to be like a bird, free to travel anywhere around the world, Europe, America, you know, Australia, and so it has always been my dream to travel. So this was an opportunity for me to, to do so. So I didn't hesitate to leave the shores of Nigeria off, you know, to a place really far away, you know, towards the, <laughs> the, the end of the world, you know. So um, I had so much experience actually and expectations, but I won't regret because I must say, um, that what, uh, what I've seen so far is impressive. As you can see all around me, um, this is just all green. Greenery and greenery and greenery, green, green. You know, yeah, it's almost like paradise, if I must say. You know, that's the kind of place I always wanted to go to. You know, no pollution. You know, trees all around to breathe the carbon dioxide. And the dust in the air. You know, there is order, the security, you know, the system is working, you know. But I still miss home though, I must say. There is nothing as good as home, you know. And I miss home so much. I miss Ekpang Kukuo, I miss um, Hafan Soup, I miss Afiai Fere Boat, you know, and all this kind of stuff. These are things that you won't get here. You know, like the saying goes that uh, there's no place like home. Despite all the comfort over here and the peace, you know, and the security, the good health system, education is free, you know, I still miss home. By the way, I must tell you guys that over here, education is free. You know, from primary school level all the way to masters, university masters level, you school for free. And just in case you were sick, you can just go to any healthcare center. You don't need to present anything else than a card, the social security card. They call it the Akela card. You present it at the hospital and now there's and you're treated for free. You don't pay any dime for your treatment. You know, no matter the, 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 the kind of um, symptoms or sickness or whether it needs operation, no matter what it is, the government is going to do it for you for free. You know, I must I say free because you pay almost nothing. You know, and schooling you can go to school as much as you want. You know, and um, the government pays you for going to school. Imagine a young man who is not educated and um, he wants to go to school. Okay, there's provision for you for that. And perhaps you come from a poor background, no money you know to take care of yourself no work the government pays you for, for going to school you know they have this daily payment that they give to students you have to take care of your school and that will take care of your of your feeding and you know basic allowance you know and um, those are things that we don't really have in nigeria in nigeria you have to pay your school for yourself if i'm right health care you have to pay yourself the government doesn't care about you you know, and uh, what I see, it's the opposite. You know, going to school, you get paid. And if you're a student, you can as well work if you have to work. But then, um, there is a particular hour of work you need to uh, present. So most of the students, they do work. They have like part-time work. Of course, there's a limited amount of work they can do. You know, and still, they still get the basic allowance. You know, so, the country is fine. It's peaceful and far away from home 
we don't ex experience that much of racism here like I thought you know the whites here are really nice they treat everyone equal it doesn't matter where you come from whether you're black or white in so far as you're in the system they're treated equally you know in terms of healthcare, education you know there's provision for everyone they will say oh these people are white and they are from here or like we have in Nigeria we have indigenous indigenous issues and all this kind of stuff I'm an indigenous of a quiet bomb I'm an indigenous of cross I'm an indigenous of that over here there's no indigenous <laughs> issue it doesn't matter whether you're black or white you are treated equal you, know, you are granted the same basic allowance support assistance like the citizens themselves and most of us most of, most of us here are citizens as well but even if you're not citizen as long as you're living in the living in the system you're into the system you also have the right to all these basic assistance and allowances you know so there's no discrimination when it comes to that not like in Nigeria where we are fighting you know with tribalism and all this kind of stuff <laughs> you know over here there's no such thing but there's one thing that I'm very proud of you know, I've been able to keep my language you know, I speak Ibibio, a mix of Ibibio and a fact. Because I come from a background where my father and my mother were from both sides. So I feel more like I am, you know, from, uh, I'm of ethnic origin, but I also feel that I'm typically a Ibibio. You know, and I believe that unity is strength. I'm looking forward to a time when the Ifuk and the Ibibios will come together. You know, because we only have the Ifuk. In the whole world, we have the Bibios, of course, the Anangs and Aron and Iket, who sort of teamed up to make up a Bibio, to identify themselves as a Bibio. But the Ifuks decided to like be all by themselves and they're sort of excluded, you know, and their language and culture is slowly dying away. So, the only way they can revamp it, fortify the language and the culture, is to stick close to the Bibios. Of course, we have many Bibios living in Crossover State, Calabar, in particular. And uh, most of them adopt the Ifik way of, you know, dressing and talking, and they speak Ifik. Most of them, yeah. And um, I must say that it's, I must say that it's to the Ifiks, you know, it's an advantage to the Ifiks because these people are indirectly promoting the Ifik language and prom promoting the Ifik culture. You know, because the Bibios are much in number, of course. I think we are the, the Bibios are the fourth largest group in. in, in uh, in, in, um, in Nigeria, meaning that the Efics are just a small group. You know, so if the team up with the Efics, they stand to gain more. I mean, with the Ibibio, sorry, they stand to gain more in terms of promoting the cultures. So it's important that we look more at the positive sides of it all rather than the negative side. Look at the positive end. How can we work together? How can we benefit from each other? You know, cross the state as large as it is with people from different backgrounds, Ogoja, Obudu, Ubra, Ikom, you know, it's quite a diverse society living in cross the state. And they are just a small minority. And as you can see, when it comes to socio-political background, it seems they if, if have been excluded completely. So we have guys from Obudu coming here all the way to take over Calabar. And they don't have any interest in promoting the Ifuk language. You know, I remember those days when I was young and back in Nigeria. They used to have these Ifuk programs on, on, on radio. Even on TV as well. You know, there was this favorite Ikonke, you know, they used to have in, you know, in, 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 on the radio. So, I used to enjoy that. You know, but today I doubt we have all this kind of stuff. And in nursery school, Ifuk was one of those languages that were being taught. If, if it was holding, it was of great value. But today, if it's not regarded as a language, in fact, it's slowly fading away. So, it was strange coming here, I must say. It was a strange thing for me. It was pretty cold here. You know, imagine you being <laughs> in a place where the temperature was like zero degrees, you know, as cold as a fridge. Is that not strange? As cold as a fridge. That is how we're living and you see us putting all these heavy jackets and all this kind of stuff. You know, like in Nigeria where we have <laughs> 20, 24, <laughs> 20, the whole year heat, apart from Hamatan, which is kind of cool. You know, so it was fun to, 
it was actually fun to come here and uh, despite the cold I was able to to pull it through you know I was able to pull it through so that's nothing strange I, I think it's a good thing yeah so of course um, it's strange to be here all by myself you know of course there are many other Africans around but we are just a minority imagine you walking along the road and all what you see are white faces white people and you're like hey <laughs> you know it's strange and this country that I am right now Finland we don't have that much Africans you know compared to other countries like Sweden Germany and Denmark Spain Italy which is a minority here so it's strange to be a black person and surrounded by white people <laughs> you know <laughs> but I like it you know I like it and uh, I adore it but every now and then I always make sure that I go home and uh, and um, and uh, I always whenever I come to Nigeria I buy this kind of uh, um, I buy video music CDs and you know movies and and most of the time I watch them online as well you know so over here I came to appreciate our culture more I got to understand the value of Ibibio and the Efu culture. That is why I see in most of my videos I post Ibibio and Efu because I believe in unity, unity is strength. So whenever I'm doing my videos, I try to bring these two people, these two nations together. You know, I want to make myself more of an ambassador, promoting my language. Because I got to understand the whites, they do everything possible to promote the little culture that they have. We have a really, really rich culture. We have a rich culture. We must learn to value our culture and not adopt the white man's culture. We must learn to give up the white man's name. You know, I, I know in most churches in Nigeria, they have this thing called Christine. Yeah, where you're giving an, a native name, but at the same time, you're also giving an English name. We should discourage this kind of practice because you will never see a white person bearing an African name you know we must learn to adopt and stick to our culture some people do traditional wedding and then they go for white wedding why white wedding are we white people you will never see a white man do an African traditional wedding so why do we do African tra uh, traditional wedding then we still do white wedding traditional wedding is beautiful colorful it's something that the white people envy and whenever they come to Africa you see them you know coming to I mean looking for every possible possible way to 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 to, 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 to be a part of our traditional wedding you, know, you see them longing to come and experience our culture to be part of the traditional wedding whereas us back home we are trying to be like them you know see people talking about wild wedding and wearing wedding gowns and suits and all that it's not our culture we must stick to our roots you know it was strange coming here, you know. It was it was a very strange thing, and uh, I actually, with time, you know, I adapted to the whole thing. It was cold, like I said, it was pretty cold here, and uh, the language as well was strange because here yeah, they speak English, yes, but they also have their own dialect. So it took me time to, you know, meander through all those processes to get to where I am today. But then I. Whole, I'm trying, I'm doing everything possible to hold tight to my culture because when I see the way these guys are, you know, appreciating and holding tight to their culture, you know, it's, I, I, I feel envious, you know, and I think it's my place to also do the same, stick to my culture. So, uh, guys, I'll be leaving you guys very soon. I came here with my family, so um, my woman's gonna have a birthday tomorrow. So I thought it's a nice thing to come out with them. She's over there, you know, just taking a video. And uh, I came here for some photo shoots today. But tomorrow is going to be a birthday. You know, and it's a great thing. My wife is from the Bubra. And uh, I got kids over there. You know, they came out with us to have fun. The weather is beautiful. It was slightly cold, but it's a very wonderful day out there. So we're going home. This is on Please remember to subscribe and uh, like and then share the video 
And remember to click that notification button down there so that you get notified anytime I post a video. So every now and then I'll be doing this magic, we'll be talking together, discussing pros and cons of our culture, you know, the good things about it and you know, that kind of stuff. Nice talking to all of you guys. Stay blessed.